Good day students, uh, welcome to the Statistics, Data Analysis and Probability section of the KC Review. Uh, remember this document is available online uh, the www.cde.ca.gov website. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with 39. We're going to be going from 39 to 45 in this clip. So let's take a look at uh, problem uh, 39. Alright, so it says Donald uh, priced six personal compact discs uh, players. The prices are shown below. What is the median price? So uh, the two ways of finding the median, or actually two categories for finding the median. If you have odd or even, there are two different ways of finding it. Okay. So for odd, the the um, so for odd number of data sets, uh, let's put that down. So for odd, uh, is simply the median is simply the the middle uh, of the ordered set of the ordered set okay. so you just order the set and whatever is in the middle that is your median okay so if you have an even set of data what's your median is going to be the average um, of the two middle the two middle um, of the ordered set, okay? You notice that in both cases, you must order the set. The set must be ordered either in increase, either, either in ascending or descending order, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter the way you order them, okay? Um, for odd number of sets, it's easy because you have just only one number in the middle, and that is automatically your median, okay? Uh, but for even, you have two numbers in the middle, so you have to average both of them out to find out what the median is, okay? So let's take a look at this example. Is this uh, case one, odd, or case two? How many elements do we have in this set? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be even. So you're going to notice that we'll have two numbers in the middle. We're going to average them out to find out what the uh, median is, okay? So let's, let's um, order this set. So we have 21, comma, uh, take this out, 21 is the smallest, we also have another 21, let's take that out, what next, going up, we have uh, 23, take that out, and then we have 25, take that out, 31, take that out, and 39. Okay, you notice we have six elements in this set, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what's in the middle? You notice that since there are even number of uh, elements in this set, we have two numbers in the middle. So what are we going to do to find a median? We'll just find the average of these two, okay? So the average is the sum of values divided by the number of values. So let's find the average. The average is going to be um, 23 plus 25, which is the sum of values. How many values are we averaging? Two divided by two, okay? When we sum the top, we'll get 48 divided by two, and the answer is 24. So the answer for option, uh, for question 39 is option B. All right, let's move on to question uh, 40. It says, Rigo's first three test scores in biolo biology for 65, 90, and 73. What is the mean? mean is like the average, so the mean, let's write down the formula again, the mean is equal to the sum of values divided by the number of values, okay? So let's sum up these values, we have three values here, so we're going to have 65 plus 90, let's add them two at a time, 65 plus 90, 5, 6 plus uh, 9, 15, and then let's add 73. 8, 5 plus 7, 12, 2. Carry 1, 228. So that's the sum of values. How many values do we have? We have three values. So we have 228 divided by 3. Okay? So let's divide this using long division. 228 divided by 3. So 3 goes into 22 7 times because 7 times 3 is 21. Subtract so that. And get 1. 8, 3 goes into 18 6 times, 6 times 3, 18, so there are no remainders. So our, our, our mean is 76, 
All right, so our answer is C. So don't forget the formula for me. Sum of values divided by number of values. All right, let's move on to question 41. It says the box below shows the number of kilowatt hours of electricity used last month at each of the houses on Harrod Street. What is the mode of this data? So mode is basically uh, most uh, recurring, okay? Most recurring or the, the set, the element that shows up the most, the most number of times, all right? So that's your, that's your uh, mode. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to tally the number of each element of this set and see which one repeats the most or occurs the most. And that will be the mode, okay? Mode is another word for most, all right? So let's start with 620. How many 620s do we have? One. So for 620, we just have one. We're going to use tally marks here. Next element is 570. How many 570s do we have? One, two. So there are two 570s. 590s. How many 590s do we have? We have one, two, three. Okay, we have three 590s. How many uh, 560s do we have? Exactly one 560. And then how about 640? How many 640s do we have? Exactly one 640. And how many 580s do we have? We have exactly one 580. Okay, so which one occurs the most? That's your mode. The one that occurs the most is 590, okay? Because it's three times and everything is less than that. So our answer for 41 is option letter C. All right, let's move on to 42. In question 42, it says, uh, the Smithburg Town Library wanted to see what types of books uh, were borrowed most often. All right, so they use this uh, chart right here. So it says, according to the circle graph shown above, uh, which of the following is, is going to be uh, true? All right, so it says, option A, it says, so for option A, it says, more children's books were borrowed than romance and science fiction combined. Okay, so let's, we're gonna be comparing percentages here. So we wanna compare children's books with romance and science. So children, Children's books uh, is 26%. Uh, so children is 26%. So what is romance and science fiction combined? So romance and science fiction. Romance plus science fiction is uh, basically 13 plus 18, right? So 13 plus 18, let's see which is more. If I add this up, I'll get... Uh, 31. All right, so does do we have more children's books than the combination of romance and science? Absolutely not. This is less. So this statement is false. All right. Okay, let's move on to option letter B. It says more than half of the books borrowed were children's mystery and art combined. So more than half, we know that half is what in percentage? Half is 50%, which is half of 100, right? So if I combine children's mystery and art, do I get more than 50%? That is a question, okay? So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to combine those together and then see if we have more than 50%. So children's is 26 plus mystery. Mystery is 20. Add that up first. Uh, we have 6 and 46. And then art is 4%. Add that as 50. So this is exactly, exactly half, okay? Well, the question says more than, more than half has to be greater than 50%. 50 is not greater than 50%, right? 50% is not greater than 50%, so that means this is false, exactly half, okay? So this is not good enough. All right, let's uh, move on. Our answer is either going to be option um, D or C. So let's take a look at C first. So it says more mystery were borrowed than art and science fiction combined. So what's the percentage for uh, mysteries? Mysteries is uh, 20%. And then art and science, art plus science is going to be um, four plus 18. If we combine that together, we have 
2%. So is mysteries greater than art and science as indicated here? Absolutely not. Mysteries is less than art and science because art and science is 22%, which is greater than 20. So C is wrong. So our answer should be option D. But just to verify, let's take a look at what the question says and, and be confident that our selection is correct, okay? So option D says more than half of the books borrowed were romance, mystery, and science. Remember, more than half has to be greater than 50%. Okay, that's what more than half means. So if I add romance, romance is, so I'm going to do romance plus mysteries plus science fiction. I'm going to add all those three, okay? So if I do that, I'm going to have uh, romance is 13, mysteries is 20. Let's add those two, do two at a time. So if I add these two, I'm going to have 33. And then for science fiction, science fiction is 18. And if I add it up, I'll end up with 51%. So 51% is clearly greater than 50. So this is accurate. So our answer is option D. All right, let's move on to the next question, question 43. It says three fourths of, of 36 members of a club attended a meeting. 10 of those attending the meeting were female. Which of the following questions can be answered in the information given? So let's take a look at this. So you three fourths of 36 members attended a meeting. What is three fourths of 36? So three fourths of, of is multiplied by 36. So this is three fourths of, remember of is multiplied. If I want this out, what do I get? Now I can cross reduce, four goes here once, four goes into 36 nine times. Nine times three is 27. So what does this tell me? 27 people attended the club, attended the meeting, right? What else can I decipher from this information? Since 10 of them were female, 10 female, then the rest must be male, right? 10 female, how many do you have left? 10 minus 27, so we have 17 males, all right? So this is basically all the information I can tell. So which of these can, which of these options are correct? It tells you how many males there are in a club, Actually, um, these are the people that attended. So attended and attended. See, this problem tells me how many males attended. It doesn't tell me how many males there are in the club. Okay. Uh, how many females are in the club? It doesn't tell me how many females. It told me only 10 out of the 27 attended. All right. It tells me how many male uh, members of the club attended, or well, exactly, because I know exactly 17 out of the 27 were male attendees, because the other 10 were female, and a total of 27 attended the meeting, all right? Then D, how many female members of the club did not attend the meeting? We do not know. We know that a quarter did not attend, <clears throat> but we don't know how many of that quarter uh, are male or female, okay? So it doesn't tell you anything about that. All we know are the number of males and females that actually attended, not the ones that did not attend. So our answer is option C. So what you can learn from this problem is basically use the information you're given to find out everything you possibly can, and then you can just use methods of elimination to cross out options that do not work. All right? Okay, I'll let's move on to question uh, 44. It says the number of games won over four years for three teams is shown on the graph. Which of the statements is true? It's true. Um, option A says team three always came in second. Well, let's see. Team three is the one in gray. So second here, good. It's third here, so that doesn't work. So option A is not right because in year two, team three came in third. Uh, option B, uh, team one had the best average overall. Uh, we can calculate this. Add it, do the sum and divide it by the average and figure out what that is. But that'll take some time. Let's see if there's an easier option to figure out. So I'll put question mark here. We're going to see if there's an easier option that makes sense. I don't know if this is true or false. Team one always won more games than team three. Is that always the case? Always. So is team one always taller than team three? Year one, yes. Year two, yes. Year three, yes. 
is four. No, why? Because you notice team one, which is the white one, is shorter than team three, which is the gray one here. But in other cases, team one is always higher. The white one is always taller than the gray one. You notice? So it's true for the first three years, but for the fourth year it was false. So that's not true. Team two won more games each year than in the previous year. So the question is in option D, does the number of games won by team three does it does it keep by team two does it keep going up every year? Well let's see. Uh this is team team two in year one. In year two it went it went higher. In year three it went higher. In year four it went a little bit higher. But notice that every year there was an increment, right? So that means that team two won more each year than in the previous year. Answer is option B. Okay? So you notice how it went through? This one is a little bit iffy. I wasn't sure if that was the right answer, so I skipped it and I looked at other ones to see which one was easier. Um, and we found out that D was an excellent option that, that was true. Okay, so the answer to 44 is D. All right, let's take a look at question uh, 45. It says the total number, the table shows the number of real estate transactions. Transactions by type for a city. Okay, so which of these statements is true? All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, for option A, it says more than half of the sales were single family residences. So more than half. So what is half of this? Let's divide this by two. Even though if you look at it, 400, if you divide 400 by two, you're gonna get a number that's, if you divide 452 by two, you get a number that's bigger than than 200, right? So is this up to 200? Absolutely not. So this is less than, than that, all right? So let me just show you the steps. So what I do is I take the area total, 452, divided by two. Uh, two goes into, two, uh, um, two goes into four, two times. Two times two is four. Subtract, bring down to five. Two goes into five, two times. Two times two is four. Subtract one, bring down to two. Remember, always drop down the numbers when you're dividing. Two goes into 12, six times. Six times two is 12, we made it zero. Is this uh, more than 226? Absolutely not, so A is not the, not the answer. All right, let's move on to option B. More sales occurred for land than in all the areas combined. So land, we have 255. Uh, so what's left? Is, uh, is what's left bigger than or less than 255? We can even look here and we can tell that it's going to be less because this is much bigger than, than halfway. All right, so let's do the mathematics just to be sure. I'm going to subtract land from two, from the total and see if I end up with a smaller number compared to the land number, okay? So borrow one from here, 12 minus 4, 12 minus 5 is 7, 4 minus 5 over another 1, maybe it's 3, 14 minus 5, is 9, 3 minus 2 is 197. So everything other than land, they all add up to 197. Is that less than the amount of number of sales per land? Yes, it's absolutely net less, right? So that means that more sales per land occur than everything else combined because 255 is greater than 197. So our answer to number 45 is option B, okay? All right. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel just by clicking up here. More videos can be found on mapyourserver.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.